Are these trees dying? Fall is the time of the year when trees undergo a transformation. A lot of evergreens start to shed needles from the prior year's growth at this time of the year. It's nothing unusual. It forms a, a layer of needles underneath the tree which help protect the tree and help cut out competition. It's a normal process. Pines and arborvitaes do this dramatically in some cases, especially after a transplant. And it's nothing to really worry about because it's a natural process that under the trees normally undergo. You can get significant amounts of yellowing in the interiors of the tree. These needles will fall off and become a mulch for the tree for next year. So don't worry. It's a quite a normal process. It's just like some trees lose all their leaves. Some trees lose part of their leaves. Normally an evergreen can lose up to a third of its leaves per year. So it's not something to worry about. Now I'm going to show you arborvitaes next so that you can see how significant the needle loss can be. And it's called fall needle loss. This is a Techni Arborvita showing dramatic amounts of fall needle loss. And you can see all of them in this group of Techni are doing it. However, right next to it are Green Giant. And the Green Giant do show and exhibit some needle loss and yellowing. It's fall needle loss. It's nothing to be worried about. It's typical and normal. Some trees will do it a little more extensively than others. And as you can see over here on the larger green giants, there are a significant amount of needle loss, but it's, again, it's nothing to worry about. And again, you can see it up here on the pine trees. And then if we go over here and you look up to full-size trees, these are full-size pine trees, and up in the trees you can see significant yellowing. That's fall needle loss again. There it is. And here's some Niagara Arborvitaes and they have fall needle loss. And as you can see on the ground here, these are our boxwoods, it forms a layer of needles. You can see right up, even in this large pine tree, you can see the fall needle loss. So it's nothing to worry about. Now I'm going to talk to you about some other things for nursery stock and care of Arborvitaes. Thank you. My name is Mike Chris from Highland Hill Farm, and today I'm going to talk about fall needle drop. The fall needle drop happens to all evergreens, regardless of what kind they are, and usually it's found on the inside, interior part of the, of the tree, such as this right in here. Uh, usually, all evergreens lose about one third of their canopy every year. Most people don't see it because it's happening on the inside part of the tree. But it's regardless whether it's hemlock, or a holly, a cypress, or an arborvitae, a spruce, or any of the Pisces, they all have this fall needle drop. Uh, usually what happens is, like again, it does fall on the inside, and sometimes when we dig it up out of the ground, they experience more, abnormally more fall needle drop than what they would do if they weren't in the ground. This is due because of the stress they have when they get dug up out of the ground. Since the roots have been cut when we dig them, there's not as many roots in the ground to support the foliage up top so that the plant does not give, get as much water as it normally does therefore the plant has to get rid of certain parts of the tree and that's usually the interior parts you can look at that and say oh it's very bad my tree's turning brown but well, it's actually a good response it's better than having a part of the tree or a branch die off or any like all the lower parts dying off it's much better than that when a plant looks at itself and sees which part it can get rid of and which part to keep, the parts that it gets rid of is the interior parts because it does not get as much sunlight, therefore it does not photosynthesize as much and it doesn't create as much energy as the parts on the outside. The parts on the outside also are much more important because they are continuously growing and they're going to be the parts where the new growth comes in for next year. So when you see fall needle drop, it's nothing major. It usually happens right after transplanting, especially in the fall. And 
don't be too alarmed by it. It is a natural phenomenon, and that's all evergreens have. And sometimes it can be quite severe and scare someone. Is correct, Mike? Yeah. Like down here, you could look at these trees and say, wow, that's a lot of fall needle loss will drop. And actually, the trees are fine. They will grow through this, and it will, they will fall on the ground and become the mulch for that tree for next year. That's right. Okay, well, thank you very much. And you can see over here, here's a holly, and you can see some of the yellowing there, and that's doing the same thing. It's got some needle loss. Nothing to be concerned about. We're here at Highland Hill Farm on Route 313 in Fountainville, PA. I'm Bill Hurst doing the photography. I own the uh, Highland Hill Farm. And this is Mike Lewis of Lewis Wholesale Nursery. Mike is one of the premier growers that we use here at Highland Hill Farm. We also grow a lot of arborvitas, but we, we are supplied by Mike. He's right across the street from our nursery and our, our operation. And Mike is, is an expert on raising arborvitas. Mike went and graduated from the Longwood School in uh, uh, Chester County, Pennsylvania, and he's a, a premier grower in Pennsylvania, world-renowned grower. Now, I shouldn't say that, but that is the truth. Everyone in uh, Northeast Pennsylvania and the uh, Eastern Seaboard who raises arborvitas and, and nursery stock knows Mike Lewis here, so he's well known. And he's going to talk to you today about arborvita trimming and how to trim them properly. And these are small arborvitas, a zebrina green giant, and an emerald green. Okay, Mike. All right. What you want to do with your arborvitae is, when you prune them, you want to encourage them to have a single stem. Just one stem coming up out of the middle, like right here. What you want to do is knock back some of these extra stems. Here in the Northeast, we get a lot of wet, heavy snow, and if you have too many stems, they have a tendency to pull apart. Most of the time, they'll spring back, but sometimes you might get some breakage. So what we like to do is take the head shears and knock these tips back just a little bit, which will encourage a fuller, fatter plant, as well as keeping it up into a single stem. In school, we were always taught, when in doubt, cut it out. So you always want to, don't be afraid to take a little bit of, of foliage off the tree. Here, none of these plants' branches will come up into a single stem anymore, or into a multiple stem. You cut them back, this stem will dominate. Here on the Green Giant, we're going to do the same thing. Just this is a fairly full plant, so we're just going to tip it back all the way around to make a nice, fat, heavy plant. On green giants, you get a lot of vigorous growth, so you always want to make sure you just knock your tips back just a little bit because they'll stretch out because they grow so fast. On the emerald greens, it's a much fatter, fuller plant, so you don't have to shear them nearly as hard. Just tip them back to around the plant. And again, we have a couple little stems developing here. Just trim it back. So you just have one stem coming up to the top, and that'll make a nice full plant, which is what you want. Okay. That's it. Have a good day at Highland Hill Farm. Okay. Thank you very much, Mike. We'll see you.